Hey YouTube, Todd back with another Quip Tips video for you. And today we're going to look at how to optimize the play engine. I know last video we covered contact, and so this time I thought we'd dive in and we'd look at the play engine, how you can optimize it for your system if you're building out a large template. So let's take a look here. As you can see, this is the I'm using this in standalone mode. Um, I'm pretty sure you can do some of this stuff if you're in your DAW, but I would prefer you to uh, open play up as a standalone and do any adjustments there just to make sure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to settings. So as you can see, there's different tabs up here. Now this is your typical audio tab. Um, so one thing you wanna pay attention to is the buffer size. Just like your DAW, you have a buffer size. I have mine set as 512. And so if you ever get clicks and pops and stuff like that, this is where you'd wanna adjust your play settings. Now this is just for your play instruments. And if you want to, you know, so you don't have as much uh, lag or delay, you know, you'd wanna go with a you know a lower sample size as you can see the milliseconds right now uh, I have about a 10 second 10 millisecond uh, delay so if you want to go you know to 128 stuff like that the thing you're gonna find out you're gonna find if you play with that you're gonna find the limitations of your system um, so that's just gonna be your CPU along with RAM so you know if you have a, a a CPU that's not very powerful, you know, you might have to run a, a higher buffer size and there's nothing you can do about that. There's no tricks or that. It's just what you're processing in your CPU. So I have mine set as 512. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what uh, is normal or, you know, what they load um, as uh, default. Uh, I, I haven't really messed with it myself. I find that 512 works for me. I might bump it down a little bit, but when you start stacking in instruments up, you know, a lot, uh, this, you know, you're going to find yourself getting clicks and pops. So this just typically works for me. Um, so let's go to the streaming tab. This is very important. Um, I was reading the manual and notice some stuff that here I like to talk about. So as you can see, it tells how much your free system, your engine memory, and the maximum voice count. This right here, this is where you want to pay attention. Just kind of, It's similar to contact. This, you can actually control the voice count. So right now I have it at 512. And if I was on a, a, an older system, I probably would make this even higher, um, maybe 124. So this is typically like a buffer size, just like we were looking for, but this is maximum voices. So if you're playing uh, you know, notes and stuff like that, and let's say a patch has just for one note, it's like 32 voices or you know something like that. You know, and you start stacking all these notes up, you know, you're going to get the max count. So it's only going to go to 512. So what you want to do is, um, you know, it's kind of like a buffer setting. I have mine at 512 um, since I have a lot of RAM and I have a pretty decent CPU. So down here, sample cache. This is huge. If you're running a lot of RAM, then what you want to do is, as you can tell right here, it says to, the lower the level, the more stream from your disk. The higher the level, the more it's loaded into RAM. So if you're working with 16 gigabytes of RAM, you're, then you're going to actually want a you know a lower level so it streams from your disk, um, your, the hard drive. So if you're running a let's say you're not running an SSD drive, you know you might want to have these averaged. You know it might have them both high or both low. It just depends. You're gonna like I said, this is all typical to your system. Um, so. I don't know exactly what's going to work on your system, but that's a good thing to uh, keep in mind when doing this. I would stress, or just a side note here, if you are running East-West sample libraries, especially Diamond, like Hollywood Strings or Hollywood Orchestra Diamond or anything Diamond, I would prefer to run it on an SSD. I just feel like I've, I've had so much more success and quicker load times and less troubles with it. Um, I notice I have a, an external hard drive that's not an SSD that I was running east west and I was and I think in one of my template videos you saw how long it took to load up patches now I got a, a SSD thing for Thunderbolt um, and it, it runs a lot smoother so just keep that in mind if you if you're if you don't have SSD drives and you're probably going to want to run these a little bit higher so it's or balance them a little bit more so they're doing RAM and the disk but like if you have a slow disk you might want to look at more RAM so if you have a lot of RAM to work with, maybe go on the RAM side. Um, other, so that's pretty much the things that I would keep in mind I got from reading the manual. Um, now this right here, your overload setting, I have it enabled. So this is CPU load level, uh, load limit, uh, pardon me. Um, it's, this is like 80%. So once it hits 80%, it's gonna kick in the overload protection. So you can, you can adjust this setting 
however you want it. So if you want it lower or higher, you know, it's going to kick in, you know, and let's say at 50%, you know, if your CPU is overloaded at 50%, boom, it's going to kick in. If so, mine's going to wait till it's 80% and then it's going to start cutting voices, similar to how contact works in that. Um, I think that's about, that's pretty much it. What you have to really, uh, focus on is those two tabs right there. Also just a little side thing. If you want to change the default interface of this, let's say it's on the, the 57 or whatever they have it set for, you can just go in here and that's where you change that. So whatever you want set for your default face, that's where you would set it right there in the other tab. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions or if there's anything I didn't cover, uh, please leave it down in the comment section. I just wanted to hit some key points just like I did in the contact video kind of to get you to think about play. I know there's a lot of people on contact and not a lot of people using play, but just as this is some things to keep in mind if you are or looking at to get play. I think, um, or using East West stuff. I think East West has come a long way since they first released their play engine. Um, I've had hardly, you know, like I said, a lot of people were complaining in the early days. So far right now, um, I have Hollywood Diamond Orchestra and I'm, I use it all the time. I don't, and I have it on an SSD drive, and it, I really don't have any issues. It's it's pretty much on par with Contact. Sometimes it actually gets better use than Contact. I mean, sometimes I have issues in Contact. So, anyway, I hope you like this video, and if you like it, you know, please hit the like button. If you're new to the channel or this is the first time you're watching, go go and check out some of my older videos. I try to put up a lot of quick tip videos for composers that are just beginning or things that help you out uh, to save you time. Go check those out, and please subscribe to the channel. Um, if you have any future videos or anything, any topics you want me to cover, just like I said, leave it down in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for the support, all the subscriptions. I really appreciate it. Um, and I'll see you guys on the next video.